Hello, welcome back to another exciting episode. We hope you enjoy it. Oh, don't forget if you could please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash WrestleMania. We'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. We really like seeing those numbers go up. And we appreciate everyone who has subscribed in the past, so thank you very much. Now without further ado, on with the video. We're going to try to do this with these cabbages. Now this one, this one, and this one I got out of my garden. This one we got at Landisdale Farms, uh, which is from a CSA that we do buy. Um, Landisdale Farms, I hope they give me permission to do a video on that as well in the future. But if not, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and start the process for making fermented cabbage. The first step of course is to take a nice knife and go ahead and chop it up. Doesn't really matter how you chop it as long as you get it into small pieces. And it doesn't matter what color cabbage of course. But I always like to give a little bit of color. I think it makes it look interesting. I mean, take a look at that. Doesn't that look really neat? Looks very appetizing. After it's all cut up, what I do, just transfer it over to a bowl just temporarily until you get them all cut and you get ready for the next step. Now that the cabbage is all cut up, it's time for the next step. To do this, you're going to need, of course, a big bowl. Everything you just cut, as well as either like a coarse kosher salt or like a Himalayan pink crystal salt. A lot of people I spoke to really like this stuff a lot better. I'm not 100% sure why, but this is what we're going to use. Now it's very, very easy, of course with a nice clean hand. You just take some cabbage, put it in the bowl, you put a little salt on it, start massaging. Now what I have the recipe for says about one tablespoon for each medium sized head of cabbage. So I had four medium sized cabbages as you saw. So that would be four tablespoons. But I'm going to use a little bit less and I'm going to show you a little shortcut and why I'm able to use a little bit less. Now each layer that you add salt you go ahead and you smash it together, or you smash it down, because what that does, that breaks up the membrane, gets the salt in there, and you start getting the juices, it starts breaking down. That's what you want. Now this is just a, I guess a potato smasher. You can use just about anything, but as long as you break that membrane, that's what you want. Then all you do is just add a little more on top. And a little more salt and a little more smashing. Now, as you can see, you can see some slight moisture coming up. Um, it also is turning a slight discoloration from the white. That's when you know it's starting to break down, the membranes are breaking down, and you should be starting to see a brine pretty soon. And that would be the moisture that you're looking for. Okay, what you want to do next is you take a clean mason jar, and you just take the pounded sauerkraut, or what's to be sauerkraut, you put it in the bottom, and as you put some in, 
just you take the bottom of it and you smash it down so you can make more room. And you keep putting it in until you're satisfied. Now at the beginning of this video, I said that I'm going to be using a little less salt than what's required. And there's a reason. Well, this is the reason. What I do is I go to a store that has fermented cabbage. Not the stuff in the can, because that has preservatives. But the stuff that's refrigerated. And all I do is I just take a little bit of it. And I put it in mine. Kind of like a, like a mother. Um, when you're doing some other stuff. There we go. And that kind of gets things started. So you don't need quite as much salt um, to get your own brine going and to get the bacteria going. Just a little hint for you. You then just put more cabbage on top, all the way up to the rim. Now I just happen to do it with purple cabbage just to make it look interesting. But obviously you can just fill it up with the rest of the same color cabbage if you wish. Now that you have it full, what you want to do is actually take your hands now, since you can reach it, and you actually push down as hard as you can and try to compact it. Make it as tight down there as possible. But now you can see there's a big gap. So what you do is with the rest of the cabbage that you have, you go ahead, just plop it right on in there. Go ahead and use your clean hands. Not a big deal. And you just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until you get it back up to the rim again. Just like this. So in my case, of course, you have the white in the bottom, you have the purple cabbage in the middle, and you have the green cabbage on top. All nice and compact. Now once you get these filled to the top, a lot of people will tell you if there's not brine that you can see at the top, go ahead and fill it with water. However, if you go on YouTube, you will see people who have done that. When they go to ferment, the juice just flows straight out because in literally a few hours, the brine will come up to the top. If you try to top it off on your own, you're going to have a mess. Now to do fermentation in mason jars, there are a few things that you really should have. One of them, of course, are these pickle pebble, pebbles. Um, which really all they are are just these little glass rings that fit right into a large mouth mason jar. It kind of weights um, your cabbage down so it stays below the brine level so you don't get any uh, mold and stuff like that. Okay, once you wash them really good, all you have to do, you slip them right in, push down a little bit, and that's it. That's all you have to do for the pickle pebbles. Now with the fermentation lids, I'm going to use one of each just to see how each one is. They both cost about the same, so it's not that uh, big of a difference. But I'm going to start out with the easy fermenter. And of course it comes with the lids and the seal. And there's a bonus oxygen extractor, so I'm going to see what that's all about. After washing the lid, what you do, you just put that right on there, make it nice and tight. There's also this little tab right here that uh, today just happens to be the 29th, so I put it on 29 so I can keep track of when I started this. And then you don't necessarily have to do this next part, but it came with the kit, so I'm going to use it. And what that is, is the extractor. From what the instructions say, there's a little lip there. You just kind of put it right down there. You pull up on this. And that's all you got to do. And supposedly, all the extra air is out. 
Now with the fermentation kit, we have a couple lids. They each have their own seal. Then they have this burper mechanism. Let's see if we can get this out. It's fermetically sealed. Oh, there we go. That you actually stick inside. There's this little rubber gasket I have to get out yet. Oh, there it is. Little rubber gasket. And what that does, that goes right in there, like that. And then the burper goes right in there. Then you take this lid off, you fill this reservoir up. You can't see it on the video, but there's a line right about there. You fill it up with water, and that way no air gets in, but the CO2 comes out. Then after you fill it up, that you put on this lid that has little tiny holes in it, so that way the gases can escape. But again, no air can get in. So let's put this on the other one and see what happens. And after everything's washed up, all you do is screw that on, give it a nice tight turn, and that's it. And this is also a suggestion, but just so you don't get a mess, I would put them inside a bowl or something that would catch any juices in case it overflows. What you are going to have to do now is try to find a place that's not too cold to put these out to ferment. That's not in your way, which can be hard. But again, you don't want to put it in an area that's too cold because to stop the fermentation process, you put it in the refrigerator. Well, you don't want to stop it uh, quite yet. So again, try to find a place maybe... In the spring, summer, or fall, you can put it in your um, in your garage. But in the winter time, if you do something like this, you may have to keep it in the kitchen and put it aside. Try to find some place that's not in your way. This is five days after the start of fermentation. You can see I'm going to have to empty this right here um, and put more water in. Take a little bit of the brine off because, as I said before, um, although it was not everything was not below the brine before, um, obviously it did break down within the last. See, I think it was five days now that it's been doing this. It's been fermenting, so we do have a little bit of an overflow I have to take care of, and you can't quite see it quite so well here because it's um, white cabbage but it has a clear liquid. It did go up a little bit, so I'm going to have to clean that out a little bit. And this, you can see um, a whole lot of fermentation going on. In fact, it even went out over the edge, and thank goodness I put this bowl down. So that's a five-day update, and we'll be back hopefully in another week. Okay, here we are on the 15th of the following month. Now these were put in on the 29th. You can see where the colors kind of started to blend together here a little bit. Um, now I will tell you, I did have to put some more water in here. Um, you do have to check it every once in a while to make sure that the water level is at the right place. And one thing that I did find that was interesting was the water level did seem to go up and down depending on what our weather was. Now I did see a couple people on YouTube say that the barometric pressure does correlate with that. Um, and that kind of makes sense because if you see the old type barometers that have the liquid in it and they have these little tubes in there and the tubes go up and down 
in the liquid depending on what the barometric pet pressure is. Um, sort of the same thing with that weight in here. It kind of went up and down compared to what the barometric barometric pressure was and somehow the water level would do the same thing. So I guess I buy that. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to take a little bit of a taste test out of one of these to see how it is. Again we put it in on the 29th last month and it's the 15th of this month so let's see how they taste. See if we can get that weight out of here. Okay, we got the glass weight out. And let's see how this tastes. Go down in there. See if I can get a nice deep taste. Mmm. Definitely still has a little more to go yet. But so far I think it's really good. You, you can taste that tanginess um, of the fermented uh, sauerkraut. You have that sourness that's coming in so yeah it's definitely working so let's see if we can wait a couple more weeks try it again okay here we are on the 29th one month later after I started this thing so let's see how the fermented cabbage is now uh, as far as looking at it from the last shot we had you can see where the colors mounted completely now so I guess that's a good thing and of course the regular white cabbage uh, still stayed white. Now I did kind of sort of I think cheat a little bit because I did put a little more salt in there uh, to try to increase the bacterial growth that we need for the fermentation so maybe that helped we will see. Yeah, as you can see, the sauerkraut, or the fermented cabbage rather, did uh, definitely get a darker color, as you see. Now that's good sauerkraut. So it was uh, maybe about a half tablespoon, I guess it was. Uh, that I did put in the two big ones. I didn't touch the little one, but I did taste all three and they are done. And boy, are they good. So I do highly suggest that you make your own fermented cabbage or sauerkraut. You will be very glad you did. So I hope this helped you out and I hope you try it as well. I mean, it really wasn't that hard as you saw and a big reward at the end. Thank you for watching this episode. I do ask that you please subscribe. And of course, as always, if you like this episode, please give me a thumbs up. And if there's anything that you would like to ask me about this episode or any past episodes, and of course, if you think there's anything that I could do better, please comment below. And as always, have a great day.